One of the biggest comments I get asked in my videos is, how much are these journeys? How much does it cost to take a ride in a London taxi? Well, today we're gonna to go find out. Now, be sure to stay tuned to the very end as I'll be sharing three typical journeys across London and exactly how much you can expect to pay in each of those cases. So, starting fare is £3.80. Now, all of these journeys were recorded between the hours of 10 o'clock in the morning until one in the afternoon on a weekday in London. I generally find that the midday period is one of the worst times for traffic in London because you get people who come in very early morning, say construction contractors, things like that. And then towards the afternoon, you get people who may be coming for say an afternoon shift. By one o'clock, two o'clock, you'll have vans and things like that going home. And you have maybe say taxi drivers like me coming in in the afternoon. It's just that converging point when I find the traffic gets really, really bad. And then we find ourselves a safe place to stop. And 16.40 just clicked over to 16 pound 60. This is quite a popular job in the taxi. One rail terminus over to another. If we look at Paddington Station, most of the arrivals there will be from places like Heathrow, maybe Bristol, Plymouth, generally a lot of stuff west of the country. Going on to King's Cross, that then often serves places up north. So we can go up to Cambridge, York, Leeds, Aberdeen, uh, Edinburgh. So you can see this is quite a popular journey that if someone's landed at Heathrow Airport and they need to go somewhere else in the country, or you know they're just traveling across the country, London's this kind of little hub that they have to get from one side to the other. So very frequent this kind of job. And I love this job from Paddington to King's Cross or vice versa, because you can't get it wrong. You just turn out of the forecourt and you just head straight down the Marylebone Road, Euston Road. Even better, we have a bus lane. So it generally doesn't get that affected by traffic either. About right, really. Sometimes if the traffic's heavier, it might be about 18 pounds. If you get a clearer run through there, maybe around 15 pounds. That's pretty representative. On this route, you'll notice that I have to go over the underpass. This is because since 2020, there was a cycle lane installed by the London Borough of Camden, which caused chaos and gridlock in this area. It's now since been removed and we can now resume using the underpass and traffic generally flows a lot better in this area. So the fare is most likely to be less than what is shown here on screen. Now, I know that some of you are really interested to know how much I earn in an entire day or maybe even a week. Just want to caveat that you can't take the amount of time it's taken me to do these jobs and then times out the number. So you can't just say, oh, well, you earned £30 in that hour. If we times that by 10, he'll earn £300 in the day. Reason being for that is there's going to be parts of that 10 hour shift that are gonna be quieter, say 10 o'clock in the morning, or maybe 8 p.m. at night when everyone's in restaurants or in the theater. There's less activity on the streets. And then conversely, you know, around eight o'clock in the morning or maybe 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the evening, you'll get a lot more people physically wanting to move around. So they can be your more profitable hours. Also remember that you don't always end up in an area such as central London where you can instantly pick someone up. It's gonna be inevitable across the course of your shift that maybe you'll get a job out to say, Notting Hill, down to Fulham or somewhere like that. You then have to travel all the way back to somewhere a bit more centralish before you can pick up a job again. So it's not just as easy as adding up all these journeys. In fact, if you check out one of my previous shift videos, you will see that there's often a lot of dead time between one job and then going on to pick up the next. I'm gonna do King's Cross now and into the West End. Another popular journey, uh, you could exchange this with, I don't know, like Marylebone into the West End, uh, Euston into the West End, they're all about the same really because they're all on that top road, the, the, you know, the Euston Road or the Marylebone Road. Marylebone Station might be a little bit further to come in, whereas Euston and King's Cross is almost like a direct line straight into the West End. I'm going to go with the London Coliseum. Let's go with the London Coliseum. King's Cross, London Coliseum. Let's go. This is another bread and butter job. People will come in from outside of London, they get to the main railway station, and they don't want to have to bother with tubes or buses, they'll just jump straight in a taxi. Hello. Where's the British National Library? Bit further down that road, there's a big red building on this side. Thank you. No worries. Now for the British Library. I love it when people ask me for directions. So good. On this route, there's probably only about two ways I can realistically run this, and both of them involve getting to Shaftesbury Avenue. 
I can either go around Russell Square and past the British Museum to bring us out into Bloomsbury Street and Shaftesbury Avenue that way, or in this example, I just turn left into Gower Street and just follow that all the way down. Thankfully, it's quite clear today and it very neatly leads us into Shaftesbury Avenue. And it's literally just rolled over to £14.20. Look at that. So my accurate estimation of about £14 was about right. If it was clearer, maybe, you know, £13 could be good. And obviously it was a bit busier into the West End. Gower Street was reasonably clear. I think Gower Street could have been busier. Euston Road was a good level. I've never, it's never really much busier than that. Shaftesbury Avenue was about that usually as well. Potentially could be about £16 to get down to here. And of course, on weekends, you've got the weekend rate. So it might be more like £18, something like that. Uh, to give you some perspective where we are in London, uh, Trafalgar Square is just through over there. So we're pretty close to just bang central London. So that gives you an idea of what to pay. Most of those kind of um, t railway terminuses are going to be a similar sort of fare to that. Victoria, similar fare. Paddington's going to be a bit more. Marylebone and Euston, Euston especially, Euston will be a bit cheaper. Euston will be about £12 because it pretty much is straight line because you're, you're pretty much bang opposite Gower Street. So Euston will be cheaper. Liverpool Street, because you've got to get over from the city, so that's going to be a bit more expensive. That might be more like £18. London Bridge, same sort of scenario, but could be there. Waterloo, Waterloo is going to be similar money to this because that's quite simple. So let's take our hypothetical day out in London a little bit further. You've come into the West End, you've been dropped at the Coliseum, you've had a great time. You think, you know what? I'm gonna to head to Selfridges for some shopping. So you hail down a taxi on Charing Cross Road. So let's go, let's start there. Now often when I get hailed down in the West End, the most difficult bit of the route is generally getting out of the West End. If it's say 10 o'clock at night and they wanna go back to a station, then it's just the initial kind of busyness of the area that's difficult. Once you're free of that, then you're okay. Wardour Street is a great way to leave the West End and get up a bit higher if you're moving over into the Marylebone, Marble Arch kind of area, as we are. We go via Great Marlborough Street and we see one of the most difficult zebra crossings in London. I'm not too sure what can be done here because it's got an island and the best zebra crossings generally do have islands because that allows traffic to flow much better because you treat each separate half of the zebra crossing as its own zebra crossing. But there's always a constant flow of people going across this one, even at this time of day. Now for this route, I'm using Maddox Street into Grosvenor Street, just that top part of Mayfair. This route actually runs roughly parallel with Oxford Street. You might have seen me use it before. And the great advantage with this is that if I was on Oxford Street, I might get stuck behind a bus that's unloading or maybe a taxi that's picking up or unloading and lots of pedestrian crossings on Oxford Street as well. So this neatly cuts through it and we're going to head to the side door of Selfridges using Duke Street. I'm just going to drop on the opposite side of the street. There's a taxi rank on the left, so I'm not allowed to drop there. This is conveniently out of the way. One great thing to remember is that in London, the taxi fare will remain the same no matter how many passengers you have. So as an example, if there's five or six of you in that cab, you could just split that fare. It doesn't increase because there's more passengers. So on this example, from the Garrick Theatre to Selfridges, if there's six of you in my taxi, you'd be paying around £2.25 each. Now that is actually cheaper than taking the tube and it's door-to-door -door service. In fact, it's only 60p more expensive than taking the bus. It's a great way of looking at taxi fares. Let's imagine there's three of you and the taxi fare comes to 15 pounds. Well, at a fiver each, that's cheaper than the price of most pints in London. Go figure. And there we go, that one, 13 pound 40. So shortest of all the routes has been the cheapest, but we don't cover as much mileage. A lot of that is down to the fact that it's the time element. We're sat in a lot of traffic throughout that route. It's a lot of traffic lights. You're not generally rolling like you would have done on the Paddington to King's Cross example or the King's Cross down to the West End example. Maybe if it was really busy on the West End, it could go up to £15. But 
you know, 13 pounds 40, that kind of route I took, seems about right, really. I'm gonna do a job, a job from Selfridges. Let's go from Selfridges to Waterloo Station. You rounded up your day, you wanna get home. Let's give that a go. That driver's on the rank. We're not gonna join the rank. I'm just gonna start my meter there. Cool. Now on this route to Waterloo, there's actually quite a lot of things to contend with. Firstly, James Street is shut. That's actually the street that runs parallel to this one here at Selfridges. It's one way south and it neatly pulls you into the Mayfair area. Without that, I have to go a little bit further along and take New Bond Street. A bit more traffic there, but I'm able to use St George Street, which neatly cuts out a set of traffic lights. I know to set Waterloo, I need to get over Westminster Bridge. And to do that, my best way of doing that is via Trafalgar Square. Now, when I set off, the other thing I've got to think about is the fact that the time of day means that the changing of the guard is on so that I can't use the palace roads. And as a result, the areas around the palace roads might be a little bit busier. And then when we get to Trafalgar Square, you'll notice the traffic really picks up here. This is of course, caused by all the people that are diverting around Buckingham Palace because they can't use the palace roads. You might be thinking at this point, well, that's great for you, Tom. You know, you're just sat in traffic and that meter is clicking up. And yeah, the meter does click up. But if you look at my previous video called How Do Cabbies Bump Up The Meter, the meter goes up a lot slower when I'm stuck in standstill traffic as opposed to actually moving. I.e. if I spend 15 minutes on a motorway or 15 minutes in standstill traffic, the motorway journey is gonna increase the meter so much more. Remember, the true multiplier for us London cabbies is the starting fare and potentially a tip at the end. My aim is to get through the job as quickly as possible so I can get onto the next job. That's where the true value lies. Oh, it's a set down and <laughs> you get people loading up here. Well, I ain't got anywhere I can set, so let's just go there just so I can stop the meter. Meter's at £21.20. This route was a little bit painful. I was hoping it'd be more around £18. So this is the anomaly of the four routes I've done. I hope that gives you some insight into how the meter actually works in these taxis. Also, if there's any cabbies out there, or anyone who thinks, oh, why are you telling anyone about how much these journeys are? You know, you're telling me how much we earn. These are just a few representative examples of journeys in London, and the actual rate is defined by TfL. You can find out exactly how much a London cabbie charges, or how much the meter charges, on the TfL website. So this is all very much public knowledge. I'm not exposing anything here. Um, I'm merely doing this so people who don't get in a cab often can look at you know the representative examples uh, of the meter and get in. Another way of looking at taxi fares is generally taking an average. If I said that on average this would be around 18 pounds, most of the time say 18 pounds, sometimes it might creep over 20 pounds, sometimes it might be a little bit cheaper, say 16 pounds. You know, i.e. if I'm going from the West End over to the Tower of London, that will generally always come out about 20 pounds or so. You only really get into the sort of 30 pound territories if you're going like, you know, some sort of serious mileage. You get ones, you know, up into the 30 pounds, but you will generally know about it. You would be in the cab for a long time. I, as the driver, really feel it as well. And I suppose the other thing I really want to show with this is that the meter doesn't like spiral out of control where it gets to like 50 pounds or something like that, like that. You, know, you generally have to be doing a distance for that to happen. And the other thing to add is that if we're in spitting distance of the destination, I will let the passenger know. Sometimes they'll say, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry, I've got time to kill. I'm happy to wait. We'll just wait until we get directly outside. Other times they'll say, oh, great, thanks. I actually need to get there for a certain time. You've saved me a lot of time. So you might get a tip for that. Generally, I have no problem if someone wants to jump out because it just then it means I can get onto another job. I can start the meter again at £3.80. I'm more likely to get a tip if I get someone there quicker. And also if I'm more honest with people, Again, they're more likely to reciprocate that and give me a tip for that. If you've enjoyed this video, then I really would recommend checking out my taxi expenses video. Turnover, as we've seen in this example, can be spectacular in a taxi, but running a taxi, and specifically this vehicle, is also quite expensive. So what kind of costs do I have to pay to keep my vehicle running? You'll find that out in this video over here. See you all again soon. Bye-bye.